In the end, it's all we can really ever hope for. Somewhere between a dream I once had and a reality that I now had to live up to. Staring at those infinite possibilities of tomorrow. Yo, 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 what are you doing? There's a build up to this. This is literally the whole point of the video. Oh, uh, we gotta start from the beginning. So let me tell you a story. The story of the simple life that I live in the countryside of Japan. It's not much, but it's a lot more than I could have ever asked for. While I won't be taking you to all the cool touristy spots today, I figured I'd show you what life is here like for the average Joe living in the middle of nowhere. Well, almost nowhere. We've got shrines and trees and old things and food and more food and trees and I swear it gets better, just keep watching. So, I have this book that I'm trying to fill with all the adventure that life throws at me. Well, us actually, because you're a part of the story now. And what's a good story without someone to share it with? So let me take you guys on a short tour around my neighborhood. There's really not much to do, but there are a few things that are kind of interesting. I mean, for me at least. Anyways, yeah, uh, I'll bring the camera around. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a lot of this kind of vlogging, but I'll be definitely taking some shots. All right, let's get to it. And that's where you come in, buddy. Together, we're going on an adventure. The quest to find meaning in the most mundane of moments. This is the story of the simple life. So I live in a city of two worlds. The country area and the actual city. While I don't usually come here unless we have things to buy or errands to run, the reason I love this place is because it's home to one of my favorite buddies in the whole country. My brother-in-law, Kenji. <laughs> it's also where the old family home is. It's amazing. It's like walking into the past. A museum filled with memories and forgotten relics. And everything here has a story to tell. I entered this story pretty late, honestly. But I'm glad I did. Everyone I've ever grown to love in Japan grew up right here. It's got things from a time I can't even imagine. Old forgotten things that simply stood the test of time. And eventually, that's gonna be all of us. I have this weird obsession with old antiques. I sometimes wish I had the superpower of touching something and seeing the whole story. Because I'm sure everything has one. To hold something that existed decades before you did is something humbling. Almost makes you a part of the story now. Just wait, do 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 I do? Now, 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 Nihonshu is basically Japanese rice wine. Okay, we're gonna catch up with him during dinner. We actually have a few errands to run first, so. I can go on and on about how everything is just built different here, but showing you would be so much more fun. It's a city in a country area. I don't even know how to explain it honestly. But I'm gonna save that for another video. What I really wanted to show you is something you're probably already familiar with. Okay. Before you turn off this video, I promise you there's a point here. So as much as I'm not a big fan of fast food, I gotta say that a lot of my childhood was spent in places like this. And Japan, Japan has some pretty tricky
trippy specials. But that's not why I'm showing you this. Why I'm showing you this is, uh, well, these things. I need, I need answers to this. I have never seen these things outside of Japan. They're like private cubicles where you can eat in public without being public. This was honestly pretty new to me. Oh, and uh, yeah, Phantom Melon. It's the best, guys. Okay, enough wasting time. Let's get you back home. Well, it's green, it's calm, and it's quiet. Okay, not that quiet. I guess I can forget about her having an afternoon nap. Let's get this out of the way real quick. I had a pimple, I scratched it, it started bleeding, so I covered it up. It's there, it's done, moving on. So, I'm actually gonna try to take you guys to the small shrine that's uh, in the neighborhood. I'm not really sure, but I think every like neighborhood in Japan, there's always like one shrine or one specific temple. And I think this one's the one designated to our area. The thing I first learned when I came here is that tradition and culture is just a way of life. It's easy to forget that the country's only been open to the world again for a little over 150 years. Before then, everything was isolated. And it's the small things that intrigue me, like never walking to the middle of a shrine gate, because that's where the spirits pass. Or that there are different ways in every shrine to pay respects there. I'm honestly not the best person to teach you about culture. I'm slowly learning it myself. And teaching my kid to get it right. <sighs> yeah, sorry guys, I'm, uh, I'm hopeless in this department. Let me take you guys to a place that's not too far away. And it's been a while since I actually took my baby out for a ride. Oh yeah, but it's, it's been a while. She's hanging in there. I'm so freaking lost. Yeah, I'll figure this out. It's basically a farm that has this creek running through it. And places like this are pretty much everywhere here. Okay, so <laughs> I found this little creek. I think I've been here once. And if we're lucky, we can actually uh, see koi fish, like really big ones. All right, let me grab the other camera. One thing I often think about is how the world is just so much bigger than us. And life is just happening whether we see it or not. It's strange that we've forgotten that we're all part of this intricate story of life. And there's a story here. Koi no taki nobori. Meaning the koi that swims upstream. Legend says that it becomes a dragon and flies away when it reaches the top. A metaphor for conquering obstacles. I guess that's all of us. We're just trying our best to fit in a world that's constantly changing around us. But the truth is, one day we're all gonna be forgotten. It's inevitable. But in that short time we get here, I know one thing, I want to witness beautiful things, and I'm slowly learning how to do that. You didn't really think this would be one of my videos without a barbecue, right? I'm sorry, it's all we ever do. Otosan is actually celebrating his birthday right now and we're having a barbecue, go figure. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna bring you guys there. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. You guys get a first-hand experience on uh, how it goes. We barbecue in the good days, we barbecue in the bad. We grill when we're happy and still eat when we're sad. <laughs> I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> hey Dr. Seuss, I might have a story. The cat who got fat. The Grinch who stole ketchup. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm a dad. I 
think it's time I took you to my favorite place. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good time. I'm actually thinking of going to 7-Eleven just to get a few goodies before I go to my favorite spot. Okay. I think I got a buddy who lives on the way there, so I might pay him a quick visit. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this entire life has been an absolute journey just to find meaning. And I've given up trying to make sense of the world. I see now that it's completely out of my control. As it should be. Like you, I'm figuring out what my role is in the scheme of things. And life can get heavy. You know that. Here it is, guys. My favorite place in the entire universe. This is why this is my favorite place. You know what's crazy? One day I'm gonna wake up and I'm like, I don't know, 50, 60. But I got a story to write first. Cause when I'm here, I'm untouchable, baby. The world out there, it stays out there. And for the first time, the noise in my head that never stops finally goes quiet. And I can hear myself again. And it's telling me to live. You know, for the longest time, I never thought I would find a place like this. It's gonna sound crazy, but I've done so many things in my life, <laughs> not all good things. And so many bad things have happened to me that I got to a point where I kind of figured places like this aren't reserved for people like me. That's the best thing about life. Bill's got that second chance. So that was it, buddy. The simple life I've chosen to live. It isn't much, but it's everything I ever wanted. And this book I'm trying to fill, it's probably the most important possession I have. Because it wasn't bought with money, it was bought with time. Now how much of that do we really have? I'm glad you're a part of the story now. <laughs> and like you, I still work a 9 to 5 slaving away for society. And some days it really does feel heavy. But hey, we gotta live sometime, right? Anyways, I'm already working on our next story. I plan to show you the city and all the little hidden gems I discovered. I'll catch you later, pal.